Hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We'll get started in just a minute. All right, here we go. Uh, welcome back to class. I uh, hope guys, I hope you had a good uh, three day weekend. I know I did. Uh, we got one week to go and then spring break. And uh, this marks a really, 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 really important chapter. I know I said this on uh, Friday, but I can't overemphasize how important this chapter is uh, on what you do in your future concerning math. So here we go. Uh, any questions on the homework, which was 11.1? .1. It was on uh, opposites, absolute values, and negative numbers. Okay, uh, because of the importance of today, I'm just going to uh, look at what you uh, turn in on Teams and we're gonna proceed. So here's the, here's the basic calendar. Uh, obviously we got spring break coming up. Uh, we'll do a quick review day. Um, we're going to do three days of what I'm going to show you today, three days. So it'll be uh, exactly what I teach today. It'll be exactly what I teach on Wednesday. It'll be exactly what I teach on Thursday. Believe it or not, we need three days of this. Uh, here's your homework. It's already posted online. It is a worksheet. Uh, if there's one thing that seventh and eighth grades and, and occasionally in the ninth grades, ninth grade that uh, students struggle with are positive and negative numbers uh, and how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And that's what we're doing today. So it, uh, it simply says adding integers when most of you are experts, of course, at adding some of the integers, the positive numbers. But uh, this is your first formal class on how do you add negative numbers. All right, so quick note, uh, as I said before, we're gonna do this class for three days. There are some of you, probably very few, that will be an expert at this after today. Uh, some of you might be an expert uh, with it after three days, but there are many, I mean, I've been doing this for quite a few years, there are many of you that will not have the rules memorized. You'll still have some slight confusion uh, about adding integers. The key to getting through this chapter is to have a great resource card. I know I probably say that for so many chapters, but it's true. Uh, you're gonna hear me repeat the, um, uh, the steps of how to add integers over and over and over. Same thing with subtraction, same way multiplication, division. And as alluded to on Friday, the rules that we already have for add, subtract, and multiply and divide do not work with negative numbers. All right. Um, I usually get students that for two years, uh, it takes them around two years to memorize these rules. They are so new. They're not that difficult. But uh, I'll just say this. For the kids that really invest uh, into trying to learn this quickly and early, boy, do they find this very easy. The kids that kind of uh, don't put a lot of effort into this, they struggle. And oh, by the way, after today, every single class between now and the last math class you ever take, uh, whether that be high school or college, will involve negative numbers. And so you have to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. It's like every single problem you do will have a negative number in them. Um, so today's uh, class is really important. All right, so the entire chapter really is just add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Today, tomorrow, uh, and Thursday, we will do add, then we'll move on to subtraction. All right, so uh, just so we're on the same sheet of music, uh, we've been talking about these things called integers. Uh, integers are made up of the natural numbers. Those are the counting numbers, one, two, three. Uh, they're opposites. On Friday, we learned opposites were numbers that are the same distance away from zero. Uh, so negative one, negative two, negative three, and zero, right? Those are what make up the integers. So uh, the natural numbers, they're opposites, and the number zero, put those all together. Uh, I had one person, I think it was Malachi, asking, um, 
Uh, is that all the numbers? Because of my number line only went from negative five to positive five. Well, remember it's a number line. So the numbers continue to the right and to the left. But yes, the uh, uh, integers uh, increase or decrease by one. All right, so math with integers. That's what we're doing in this chapter. So today is just adding integers and we're gonna jump right into it, okay? Uh, the way that I choose to teach how to add with uh, 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 integers uh, is to first bring you way back to kindergarten, first grade, when you first learned to add. And most likely what you, what you learned when add was either a number line or some teachers use coins uh, with, with uh, each coin representing a number. And by that, I mean this. Um, here's the coin method for adding integers. Uh, if you have a one, a positive one in this case, I'm gonna put one coin with a plus in there. If you have a negative one, I'm gonna put one coin, different color, but this time with a negative. So one is represented by that yellow with a plus and a negative one is represented by that uh, blue coin with a minus. Uh, now I can represent any, any integer now, for instance, uh, two or positive two would be represented by two of those yellow coins. There is the representation of a two with the coins. I can do the same thing for negative two. Negative two would be represented by two blue coins with negatives. Okay, so here's the game. I'm gonna show you how to add and subtract using these coins. Obviously, if we have 10 positive coins, that would represent the number 10. If we have seven negative coins, that would represent uh, the, the number negative seven. So we're gonna do a really simple one. Obviously, everyone already knows the answer to this, but we're gonna do this with coins. So let's see how this works. Well, we take our first number and that's a positive three. How do I know it's positive? Remember the, the sign will always be to the left. The sign will always be to the left. When there is no sign, by sign I mean a positive or a negative uh, symbol. If there's no sign, it's just we just uh, 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 we consider it to be positive. Notice this two immediately to the left of it has a plus. That means it's positive two. So we have a three, which is positive. So I'm gonna represent three with three yellow coins. Uh, that symbol right there means to add. So I put a plus symbol and uh, I need a positive two. So I need two positive points. So there is using coins, three plus two. Now, what does addition mean? Addition means grouping. Addition means you take one pile, you take a second pile, you push them together and then you count. So I'm gonna take my two piles of coins, the one on the left, the one on the right, squeeze them together, and now I'm gonna count how many coins I have. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and they're all positive. So the answer to three plus two is positive five. Because remember, one yellow coin represents the number a one. So if I have five of them, that would represent five. So three plus two is five, nothing earth shattering there, but that's the game of adding using coins. Now, how does this, how does this help us? we already knew three plus two is five. Well, this method is gonna help us when we're adding positive and negative numbers. So let's see how that works. So here are two numbers here that are being added together. How do I know they're added? Well, look at the plus right here. Uh, the plus right here means that we are adding these two numbers together. These two numbers are negative seven and negative four. So you will see this uh, um, uh, symbology used when we're adding uh, positives and negatives, and that is they put the second number in parentheses. It's just so that you can uh, easily identify that it's not a positive number, it's a negative number. Okay, you'll see that quite often. All right, so let's see how this works with the coin method. So we go to our first number. Uh, our first number is negative seven. Uh, how do I know it's negative seven? Because look to the left, there's a minus sign right there. So I represent negative seven by seven negative coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my seven, seven negative coins. To that, I am adding, I'm adding what? Four negative, four more negative coins. One, two, three, four, okay? Uh, addition is the same as grouping. That means take the two piles, squish them together, and then count. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. But the coins here are not positive, they're all negative. So how many coins do I have? I have 11. How many coins do I have? I have 11 negative coins. So it turns out that negative seven plus negative four is negative 11 when we just use the coin method. All right, well, there's a big but so, here. Yes. So the addition is the same for both negative and positive. I, notice I haven't said that yes or no yet. Let's see. 
the big but here is this, is that, well, we can add either positive or negative coins. Well, let's see how that works when there's a combination of positive. Notice the three is positive. How do I know it's positive? I look to the left and see if there's a symbol there. There is no symbol, so it's positive. I look to the left right here, what's the symbol? It's negative. So this is a positive three plus a negative four. All right, well, let's see what happens here using the coin method. Well, three is positive, so three positive coins. Uh, four is negative, so I need four negative coins. Suspiciously, I didn't put a plus here because I know the next step is push them together and count, okay? All right, now here is the big difference. Notice the way that I arranged them, I got a positive coin right next to a negative coin. Well, let's go back to how we define this game. We defined as a yellow circle with a plus to be a positive one, right? That's what a yellow plus meant. We defined a uh, negative one as to be a blue circle with a negative. Well, look, right next to each other, I got a positive one and a negative one. That is literally one positive one minus one. Well, what's one minus one? Anybody? What's one minus one? Zero. Zero. So it goes away. So those two coins, the top blue and the top uh, uh, yellow turn into zero. Well, then so does that's zero as well, too. Because remember, one yellow meant positive one, one blue meant negative one. One minus one is zero. Well, that means zero as well, too. So after I cross all these out, I'm left with zero, zero, zero. I'm only left with one coin, and that coin is negative. So it turns out that three plus negative four is negative one. Right, that's certainly not a rule that we've ever seen before. Three plus negative four is one, and not just one, but negative one. Okay, so the coin method works and it works every single time. Let's see that again. So I have two plus negative four. All right, let's see, two plus negative four. So two is positive, so I need two yellow coins. Four is negative, so I need four negative coins. We said that a yellow coin and a blue coin together is zero. One minus one is zero, so that's zero. That's zero, and what am I left with? I'm left with two negative coins. So two plus negative four is negative two. Okay, coin method's not too hard. One more time, how about negative six plus negative two? All right, negative six is the six mm -hmm. negative coins, there's six. Notice I'm not putting the plus anymore because I already know what the addition is. It's grouping, we just squeeze the coins together. I put two more negative coins and notice nothing cancels this time because they're all negative. So in other words, when they're all negative or they're all positive, I simply count how many coins I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight negative coins. So negative six plus negative two is negative eight. Notice I haven't talked about the rules. We're just doing a coin method first. We'll, we'll talk about the rules next. All right, you have four problems in front of you. I want you to do all four problems on a sheet of paper using the coin method. I'll help you get started on the first one. So using the coin method, uh, positive, how do I know it's positive? You look to the left, there's nothing there, it's positive five. So I need five coins with a plus on it. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, no. Yeah. Not yet. Right, make sure you guys are on mute, unless you're asking me a question. Uh, to that, I'm only adding uh, negative coins. I'm adding three negative coins. One, two, three. That's negative, negative, negative. We see what cancels. Let's see, what cancels here? Well, one minus one is zero, zero, zero. Uh, we're left with equals two positive, in other words, two. Now, do I have to put a plus right here? The answer is no, right? Because if there's no symbol there, it means it's positive. So the first one, uh, the answer is positive two. I got my answer right in front of all my work. All right, do the next three all by yourself. This is called using the coin method. Give you about a 30 second head start, and then I'll work it through myself.
All right, let's see the bottom one. I have three negative coins. Oops. Three negative coins. Let's do it work right here. One, two, three. And they're all negative. To that, I'm grouping together another four negative coins. So one, two, three, four. And they're all negative. I'm just grouping together nothing but negative coins. They're all negative. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the answer is seven coins. They're all negative. So the answer is negative seven. I'm not sure why I didn't put an equal sign right there. All right, the next one, let's see, I got three positive coins. How do I know it's positive, right? We look to the left of the number, see what its sign is. There's nothing there, so it's positive. So I have three positive coins, one, two, three. To that, I'm adding six negative coins. I need a lot of negative coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, and they're all negative, negative, negative. So let's see what cancels. Uh, one minus one is zero, one minus one is zero, one minus one is zero. I'm left with three negative coins. Mm, coin method, very efficient. All right, last one. Uh, remember we look to the left for a, sim, for a sign. So we got a negative two, so there's two negative coins. To that we're grouping five negative coins. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they're all negative this time, so we simply count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So final answer, negative seven. And there you go. There's coin method. Any questions? Anyone want to comment about the coin method, whether it's good or bad? Um, I have a question. Sure. I just woke up um, not realizing because I thought there was, I thought spring break had started, but no, and we're still quarantined. So I'm kind of like, oh, we barely even started. Jaden, uh, he records all the video, he records the Zoom meetings and posts them on the assignment. That's what I'm going to do too, because I don't have my notes on me right now. Yep. All right, so I asked anyone to comment on the coin method. Well, there's one problem with the coin method, and it's a pretty big problem, is that the coin method always works, but you certainly don't want to use the coin method on this one right here. By the way, we will be doing this one by Thursday. That's and great. The issue is that no one wants to make 4,154 negative coins. So therefore, there must be a better method. I only show you the coin method to try to have you wrap your head around what's going on. But yes, there are rules. And so for the rest of today, tomorrow, and Thursday, we will be using the rules. All right, so let's try to figure out what the rules are. They already found one of them, by the way, on the first one. So here were two of the answers, right? Uh, negative three plus negative four, equals negative seven. That's one that we did. And two plus five equals seven. Uh, anybody notice a pattern here? When you add a negative and a negative or a positive and a positive, they, it either is a negative or a positive. Like if it's a negative plus a negative, it will always be a negative and a positive plus a positive would always be a positive. So what do we do with the numbers though when we're adding? Hmm? What do we do with the numbers when we're adding? Add. Yeah, literally when we're adding either two negatives or two positive, remember two is positive, so it's fine. When we're adding two negatives or two positives, you simply add the numbers. So we're just adding here, right? Was that the same when one was positive and one was negative? Right here, here was when one was positive and one was negative. What's the pattern here? Um, when you add, well, there really pattern well look at the answers and look at the numbers and see if you recognize a pattern we add a positive then a negative it's a positive and when you have a positive then a negative what okay, well, look at the numbers ignore the positive and the negative just look at the numbers and tell me what it looks like we're doing subtraction it looks like what we're doing is subtraction. And here is the big earth shaking thing is that it turns out that when we add, sometimes we're actually subtracting. And this is why so many students have issues. 
is that because up until seventh grade, when you add, you've been just adding numbers. Now, all of a sudden, when we add, we're actually going to, for some of the times, we're going to subtract. And oh, is it complicated? Look, sometimes we're going to add and sometimes we're going to subtract. So the key here is to, to not to notice, well, yeah, we're adding, subtracting, but the key here is to notice when do you add and when do you subtract? And so it turns out that you add when the signs are the same. You subtract when the signs are different. Notice five is positive, three is negative. Three is positive, six is negative. So when the signs are different, we subtract the two numbers. When the signs are the same, we add the two numbers and there's your problem right there. Some students, it takes them a long time to either accept uh, or to memorize this fact. Um, and like I said, I, I will have one, not many, but I'll have one or two students, even in the ninth grade, struggle with these two rules. And by the way, this is the rule for, I'm going to use the word addition, because remember, we're actually adding here. I'm adding a, th a negative three and a positive four. I'm adding a five and a negative three. But we have two different rules for those two different cases. One time you literally add, and one time you literally subtract the two numbers. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna write down this rule uh, and then we're gonna do a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of practice. All right, so there ends up being two rules, two rules. We're gonna have a rule for same signs. That's when both signs are positive so or both signs are negative. Here are two examples. That's a positive four plus a positive two. Both signs are positive. Here's an example where both signs are negative. A negative four plus, you see the plus? A negative two. So the signs are the same. Both numbers have exactly the same signs. When the signs are different, that means one is positive and one is negative, or one is negative and one is positive. For instance, the four is positive, the two is negative, or the four is negative and the two is positive. So there's two rules. And remember, to further confuse you, right, this is the rule for adding. However, we're going to find out that sometimes when we add, we subtract, and sometimes when we add, we actually add. You see how confusion, confusing that is even just saying that? So when you're adding with, with different signs, you're subtracting. Does that mean we apply that rule to subtracting as well? Like we don't have nope, to learn. There are different rules for that. And that's why, like I said, I will still have some kids even – uh, uh, even this year, I, I will never have 100% of the kids that are really, really, really comfortable. And, and the reason is that it's, it's new rules, right? It's, it's hard to, I mean, you spent for the last, uh, you know, 10 years adding, and now all of a sudden I'm pulling the rug out from underneath you and giving you new rules for adding. And one of them is completely opposite. Instead of adding, we're actually going to do some subtracting. All right, let me get my mouse here. My mouse disappeared. There we go. Okay, so I need you to write this down on a piece of paper. These are the rules for adding. These are gonna be the rules for adding. All right, there's gonna be two of them. One is for same signs and one is for different signs. So these are the rules for same signs. What do you do? So that means that either both numbers are positive or both numbers are negative. So here are the, here are the rules. Here's an example. Uh, both numbers there are positive, right? The rule is we add the absolute value of each number and that's why we did absolute value on Friday. So when both signs are positive or both signs are number, we add the absolute value of each number and it says integer there, okay? Your answer will be the original sign of the numbers. So if you're adding positive numbers, the answer is positive. If you're adding negative numbers, the answer is negative. Now, if I just left the rule there and I didn't show you any examples, I would have kids that would probably uh, get fewer of these wrongs, but I have to show you how you apply the rule. And I want you to listen to very carefully what I'm about to say. No one actually writes the absolute value. Everyone does that step in their head. I'm going to show you the absolute value, but I want you to remember everyone actually does this step in their head. 
So how do you add seven plus four? You take the absolute value of seven, you take the absolute value of four. Well, the absolute value of seven is seven, the absolute value of four is four. Well, that's seven plus four. And you're like, well, what? you didn't change anything. Yeah, because both numbers were positive. Seven plus four is 11. And you go back to what you were adding. What was I adding, positive or negative numbers? I was adding positive numbers, so therefore the answer is positive 11. You're like, well, do I put plus 11? No, remember we can leave off the plus. We can't leave off a minus sign, but we can leave off a plus sign. And some students are, well, at this point would say, hey, I already knew how to add seven plus four. I agreed, but remember this rule now applies for all numbers when you're adding. So let's do the more interesting one. What is uh, negative seven plus negative four? Well, the rule says you take the absolute value of both numbers. The absolute value of negative seven is seven. The absolute value of negative four is four. So it's seven plus four. Seven plus four is 11, but it says use the original sign. And the original sign of both numbers was negative. Therefore, the answer is negative 11. That's how this works. All right, don't panic. We're gonna be doing this for the next, I don't know, 16 years of math. If you go into college, you take more math. I'm exaggerating only slightly. All right, so let's see how this works again. Step number one, you look at the both numbers and you see, are we adding same or different signs? And by that, what I mean is you, you literally look at both numbers. I'm adding a negative 12 and a negative 31, those are the same signs. So I take the absolute value of both. Now I'm, I'm showing you absolute value symbols here. You're really doing this in your head. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. The absolute value of negative 31 is 31. So I'm adding 12 and 31. Well, that's 43, but the last step, the last step here says go and use the original sign. The original sign of the numbers were both negative so the answer is not 43, the answer is negative, negative. 43. So okay. I have a question. Sure. So when we're doing the test, do we have to show absolute value? Absolutely not. No one will actually do that. This <laughs> is only on this first couple days when I show you the process. But this is literally the same as you would do if I gave you 12 plus 31. You'd simply write 43 as your answer. The only difference here is now you have to remember that these are the steps. And, and like I said, this will become very, um, um, you, uh, you'll have this memorized and you'll just do this in your head. All right, let's see this one. Um, step number one, we see if we're adding same or different signs. Look, I'm adding, how do I know I'm adding? Well, there's a plus right there. I'm adding two different uh, numbers and they're both negative. So both numbers here are negative. That's why we use the same sign rule. So the same sign rule basically says you add the two numbers. Now it says add the absolute value of both numbers. So technically I'm taking the absolute value of both numbers. Have I made it clear that you're doing this step in your head? Well, the absolute value of negative seven is seven. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. So I add seven plus 12. Well, that's 19. But the last step is that we use the original sign. Was I adding positive or was I adding negative numbers? I was adding negative numbers. So the final answer is negative 19. All right, I'm gonna pause there. Any questions? If this were the only rule, no one would have issues. This is one of a, a whole bunch of rules. And this is your first one, right? Um, we're gonna have different rules for subtraction. We're gonna have different rules for multiplication and division. So all of those rules are all new to you and you have to learn them. All right, let's do one together. So negative five plus negative four. Step number one, are we adding same or different signs? We are adding same signs. Is anyone lost on what I mean by same or different signs? That means both signs are either negative or both signs are either positive. So I'm adding a negative and a negative or a positive and a positive. I am very, um, I am very, confused. Do you see that both signs are negative? Yes. Do you agree that that means that they're the same sign? Yes. So here's what you do. Add both numbers. Add both numbers. And then when you get your number. No, 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 just do that step first. Add both numbers. Okay.
Five plus four? One. Five plus four is not one. Excuse me. Five plus four is nine. Five plus four is nine, and we're we adding positive or negative numbers? Negative. So the answer is? Negative nine. And that's what most people will do. The step where I'm showing you the absolute value is because what I told Jaden, I said, so what's five plus four? Because the absolute value of negative five is five. The absolute value of negative four is four. So the, how I told Jaden to do this is what most people will be doing in their head. Remember the last step, five plus four is nine is, were we adding positive or negative numbers? Jaden said negative, therefore the answer is negative nine. The key here is this first step which is to identify, are we adding same or different signs? We haven't talked about what we do with different signs yet. So same signs means you add the two numbers and the answer is, well, whatever it is you're adding, positives or negatives, okay? Is that better now, Jaden? Yes. All right, moving on. Uh, okay, so to be silly here, two plus one, obviously the answer is three, but remember, if this is a rule- two integers, it still has to work. Well, the absolute value of two, the absolute value of one is one, two plus one is three. Notice both signs originally, there's no sign right here, but if there were a sign, there'd be a plus there because it's a positive two. So technically both signs are exactly the same, a positive two and a positive one. So I am adding same signs, both signs are positive. So we take the absolute value of both. No, I'm not saying anyone should actually do that, right? But you could, the absolute value of two uh, is two. The absolute value of one is one. Add the two numbers together, we get three. And originally both signs were positive. So the answer is positive three, okay? All right, let's do four of these together. Why are you not clicking? There we go. Let's do four of these together, four of these together. All right, step number one, upper left. We identify the signs, same or different. Hey, they're both negative, so the signs are the same. The sign says take the absolute value of both. The absolute value of negative seven is seven. The absolute value of negative 18 is 18, and we add those two numbers. Seven plus 18 is 25. What were we adding, positive or negatives? We we're adding negatives. So the final answer is negative 25 questions. Second one, we are adding same signs because 24 is positive and 16 is also positive because that's the sign that's immediately to its left. Absolute value of 24 is 24. The absolute value of 16 is 16. We add those two numbers together, 24 and 16 is what, 40? And we were adding positive numbers, so the answer is positive 40. Stop me if I'm going too fast or you're confused. Upper right. All right, upper right. Uh, step number one, are we adding the same or different signs? We are adding the same signs, both are negative. We take the absolute value of both. The absolute value of negative two is two. The absolute value of negative six is six. We add those two numbers together, we get eight. We were adding negative numbers, so the answer is negative. And some of you at this point are probably asking, why are we doing three days of this? Remember, this is only half of the rules, right? Last one, we are adding two negatives, right? The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. The absolute value of negative five is five. We add those two numbers together, that's 15. What we're we adding, positive or negatives? Notice we're adding negatives, so the answer is negative 15. And I'm not gonna claim it's that hard, it's not. What is hard is that all of a sudden, after you learn all the rules, boy, do they get jumbled up in your head. Okay, so this is your first baby step into uh, doing math with integers. And we were simply doing it with just either all positive or all negative numbers. But as you can imagine, it doesn't always is like, like that way. Sometimes we'll have positive, sometimes we'll have negatives. All right. So there we go. Let's move on to the, what we're missing here. What we're missing here is the, well, what happens when one sign is positive and one is negative? So remember, we already, we already kind of figured that out what was gonna happen. We said that when the signs were the same, 
we add the two numbers. And when the signs are not the same, when you have a positive and a negative or a negative and a positive, we will be doing some subtracting. So just as we did with the, when both signs are the same, we wrote down the steps. We're gonna do that right now. We're gonna write down the steps. So here are the steps for different signs. That means one sign is positive or one sign is negative or one sign is negative, one sign. In other words, the signs are opposite each other. Okay, so here's an example, seven plus negative four. So, uh, and here's the other side, um, negative seven so plus, say, say again. You, you have a random equals negative three. I'm not sure why that's down. I mean, I know why it's down there, but it's just the animation's out of order. All right, here are the rules. It's the same rule as the previous one. Step number one is you take the absolute value of both numbers. It's step number two that's different. Step number two, uh, the previous one, we added the two numbers. Now we're going to subtract, but how are we gonna subtract? Well, you're always gonna have a big number and a small number and you will do big number minus small. Cause remember step number one was we took the absolute value of both. Step number two is once you've taken the absolute value, subtract the two numbers, big number minus small number. That's gonna give you an answer to figure out whether the answer is positive or negative, we go back to the original numbers. And we ask ourselves, did we have more positive numbers or did we have more negative numbers? In other words, think about the coins. Do we have more positive coins or did we have more negative coins? Whichever one that you had the most of, well, remember when we started crossing some things out, you'd be left with whatever you had the most of. So there are the rules. Here are two examples. Let me show you how this works. All right, how this works. Well, let's see. Uh, seven plus negative four. Notice immediately I don't have the same signs. The seven is positive, but the four is negative. Remember, we look to the left for the, 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 the number sign. So I got a one positive and one negative. So I don't add the two numbers. Step number one is I take the absolute value of both numbers. The absolute value of both numbers would be seven and four. Absolute value of seven is seven. The absolute value of negative four is four. I take the two numbers and I now subtract them. Seven minus four, and notice I said big minus small. That means one number is big, seven, one number is small, four. So I do seven minus four and that's three, right? But to figure out whether the answer is positive or negative, we have one last step, and it's this step right here. We ask ourselves from the original numbers, did we have more positive numbers or did we have more negative numbers? Think about these in coins. We would have had seven positive coins, four negative coins. Okay? Therefore, there's more positive coins. Therefore, the answer is positive. So bottom line, seven plus negative four is a positive three. Notice over here on this other one, all I did was split, flip the, the negatives around. So this time seven is negative and four is positive. I still do the same first step, take the absolute value of both. Well, that's seven and four. The absolute value of negative seven is seven. The absolute value of four is four. So I take both numbers, subtract them, big minus four, big minus small. Seven minus four is three. But let's go back to the original numbers. The original numbers, notice if these were coins, I would have seven negative coins and four positive coins. There's way more negative coins than there are positive, which is why the answer seven minus four is three, but the final answer is negative three. I have a question. Yep. So when we do like, for example, positive six minus plus negative six. Those signs are the same, add the two numbers. But if it's like different signs, how would you do big minus small if they're both? You can big? move them around. So, uh, and you'll see an example here in a second. Okay. All right, so let's see how that looks. So this is what her question is right here. All right, so uh, notice step number one is the same as it was for same signs. We identify whether the signs are the same or different. Seven is positive, there's no sign here. So it's positive, but the 18 is negative. So the signs are clearly different. When the signs are different, we take the absolute value of both numbers. The absolute value of seven is seven. The absolute value of negative 18 is 18. So Vea, how are we gonna do this subtraction? 
You subtract 18 minus seven. Because it says big number minus small, and clearly 18 is bigger than seven. So we do 18 minus seven. So 18 minus seven is 11. And then we go back, last step, we go back to the original. Last step says, uh, use the, sorry, use the sign of the largest number. Well, we had way more negative coins than positive coins. Therefore, the answer isn't 11, it's negative 11. Questions? Notice I go back to that coin method. Uh, believe it or not, by the time you get to, most of you get to eighth grade, you won't even think through any of these steps. You'll just say seven plus negative 18, that's negative 11. But we're not there yet. All right, let's do another one. All right, notice one sign is uh, negative, one sign is positive. That's different signs. One is negative, one is positive. They're not the same. If they were the same, we would add the two numbers. Since they're opposite, we're going to subtract the two numbers after we take the absolute value. Does anybody actually write absolute value? No. You simply do that step in your head. In other words, you strip the signs off of both numbers. You got 11 and you got a 6. We do big minus small. Is anyone confused on the big minus small step? One number will be big, one number will be small. Subtract those two numbers. So big minus small, 11 minus six is five. Last step, we go back to the original numbers. We go back to the original numbers. The original numbers were negative 11 and positive six. Do we have more negatives or more positives? More negatives. Which is why the answer is negative five. All right, you gotta stop me if you're confused. Anyone confused? Are we doing three days of this? Heck yeah, we are. All right, once again, we look at the two numbers. We determine are the signs the same or are they different? Well, 20 is positive <laughs> and six. <laughs> Mr. Sardier. Yes. Can you go back one? I couldn't get it. How about we do this one? All right. Do you see the two signs? Are they the same or are they different? Different. They are different. One is positive, one is negative. So one sign is positive, one is, one is negative. Now remember, if the first one is positive, there won't actually be a symbol right there. If it's negative, there will be one. All right, so those are different signs, different signs. Different signs uh, says step number one, take the absolute value of both numbers. This is the step that you do in your head. So the absolute value of 20 is 20. The absolute value of negative six is six. So we get 20 and six. Most kids, when they look at this, they just think about stripping the signs away from the numbers, okay? The next step says, take those two numbers, 20 and six, and do big number minus small. Well, we're talking about this, these two numbers right here. There's a big number and a small number, right? 20 is big, six is small. So we do 20 minus six. 20 minus six is 14. The very last step says go back to the original numbers and see what do we have more of? Do we have more positives or do we have more negatives? Do we have more positives or more negatives from the original numbers there in blue? We have more positives, so therefore the answer is positive 14. So I want to make sure everybody gets this last step. If you think about this with the coins, we would have had 20 positive coins and six negative coins. That's a whole lot of positive coins. So therefore, after you did your canceling, you'd be left with 14 positive coins. All right, anyone with a question? Okay, let's do some. Why does my mouse continue to go away? I hate this. All right, here we go. Uh, signs are the same or different? Notice they are different. One sign here is negative, one sign here is positive. So we take the absolute value of both numbers. The absolute value of both numbers is 12 and 18. We do big minus small. Notice 18 is bigger than 12, so it would be 18 minus 12. 18 minus 12 is six. We go back to the original numbers, right? 
notice we have far more positives than we do negatives. There's 18 positives, there's 12 negatives, therefore the answer is positive six. Second one, once again, the signs are different. Eight is positive, six is negative, different signs. We take the absolute value of both numbers, that would be eight and six. We do big minus small. Big minus small, eight minus six is two. There are more positives than there are negatives, so the answer is positive two. Upper one, notice one number is positive. There's no plus there, but it's just hidden and negative. So different signs. We take the absolute value of both numbers. That would be seven and 12. We subtract big minus small. That would be 12 minus seven. 12 minus seven is five. We go back to the original numbers. I have 12 negatives. I have seven positives, way more negative coins than positive coins. So therefore the answer is negative five. Nobody's asking questions. Last one, negative five and a positive 13. Hey, those are different signs. One is negative. One it's is negative positive. 15. Okay. What did I say backwards? You said negative. Okay. So yeah, the negative 15 and a positive 13. All right, uh, so different signs. So we take the absolute value of both. We subtract, big minus small, that's two. And then we go back to the original signs. Notice I have 15 negative coins. I hear you. 13 positive coins, 15 negative coins, 13 positive. So there's four, there's more negatives than positives. So therefore the final answer is negative two. What did you say the last couple of seconds ago? My internet went out and I couldn't hear a thing you were saying. I uh, just went through the same procedures as always. Different okay. signs, big minus small, more, po more in this case, more negatives than positives. So the answer is negative two. All right, anyone with a question? How are we doing on time here? As you might be able to. Uh, okay, good, five minutes left. All right. So the only thing left is a combination of everything together. Now, when I do one rule or the other rule, usually no one has questions. When I throw both rules together, notice right, these are all mixed together, uh, same signs and different signs, uh, is when we generally have some problems. So let's do these together. We'll just talk our way through each problem. All right, here we go. First one, are the signs, Jasmine, the same or different? They are different. Okay, because this says negative and this says positive. That just circled, correct? Um, no, they're the same. Sorry, I was looking at number two. All right. So then, therefore, we follow the same sign. The same says same rule says take the absolute value of both and add them together. Well, the absolute value of negative two is two. The absolute value of negative six is six. Two plus six is. Two plus six. Is eight and it says use the original sign Well, the original sign of both numbers was negative so therefore the answer is negative eight. Next one down same or different signs well let's see the first one is negative the second one is positive so therefore this is different signs. Okay. Different sign says take the absolute value of both and subtract big minus small. That would be five minus two. Five minus two is three. Do we have more positives or more negatives? Well, there are five positive coins, two negative coins. So that means the answer is positive. So positive three. Next one down. Notice nine is negative, five is positive. That's different signs again. That means big minus small after you take the absolute value. Big minus small will be nine minus five. Nine minus five is four. Do we have more negatives or did we have more positives? We had more negatives. Therefore the answer is negative four. 
questions, anyone? Tell me if I'm going too fast here. I have a question. Yes, go. Okay. So why would why would number three, number three down, um, be why would the answer be negative four instead of positive four? Did we have sorry? Did we have more positive or negative coins? Here's your negative, negative coins. Here are your positive coins. Which one do we have the most of? Uh, negative. That's why the answer is negative. Okay, thank you. But remember that rule right there, more positive or negative coins is only when the signs are different. When the signs are the same, you use the original sign. Hey, they both were negative or they both were positive, okay? So that's only for different signs, that one rule there, more positives, more negatives. All right, next one. Uh, once again, uh, that positive is hidden. So we got a positive and we got a negative. Those are different signs. That means subtract, big minus small. Six is big, four is small. So six minus four is two. Jaden, do we have more positives or more negatives? Uh, more negatives. And that's why the answer is negative two. Okay, thank you. All right, the next one, notice the signs now are not different, the signs are the same. When the signs are the same, we simply add the two numbers together, four plus 10 is 14, but we're adding negative numbers. So the answer isn't positive 14, the answer is negative 14. Last one, signs the same, are they different? They are the same, they're both negative. When the signs are the same, you simply add the two numbers. Four plus four is eight, but we were adding negative numbers. So the answer is negative eight. And there we go. All right. We learned two basic rules today. One for same signs, one for different signs. When the signs are the same, we basically add the numbers. When the signs are different, we basically subtract the numbers. I left off a few steps there, but that's basically the idea. Of the two rules, the subtraction one is generally what kicks kids' butts, and it's only because they forget the last thing. You need to ask yourself on the ones where the signs are different, 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 different. When the signs are different, your last step is, do we have more positives or did we have more negatives? And remember, I'm gonna go back to the coin method. We're just simply looking to see what you originally started with, more positives or more negatives. When you start with more negatives, the answer is negative. When you start with more positives, the answer is positive. And that's it for today. We're going to do this for three or two more days. Tonight for homework, you're going to give it a shot. We'll go over the answers tomorrow in class. And then we're going to just work our way through. We get better at this with practice. And generally what I found is we get better at this is when we talk through every single problem. We talk through the problems. I mean, literally go over the steps. We get much better results. So be ready because we're going to be doing this for a bunch of days. And then we learn some new rules. And by the way, we got to learn new rules for subtraction. Okay. Uh, the worksheets we'll be using uh, next year's notation. By that, I mean, here's what I used in class. It's what's in the book. Uh, on the worksheet today, negative six will be written this way. So don't get uh, lost on that. Uh, any questions on anything we did today? Nope. And I am out of time. So you guys have a good day today. Make sure you study hard, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, Mr. Chardier. See you guys. Bye. -bye.